looks like a new backup running back is emerging in Kansas City behind Pacheco. The I think a lot of people assume that would have been Clyde Edwards Hilaire just based off last year, but it looks like Daenerys Prince is making some noise in training camp. What have you been hearing from your people and what you've been seeing from like practice um uh practice uh footage? We're Clyde Edwards Hilaire is obviously the experienced backup. He's the name there. But the running back that's getting a lot of run as the number two back, and some of it because Clyde Edwards has been there for so long, Pacheco's been there for so long, and Kansas City does a good job of rotating in some of the um, backups to get them up to speed. So it can get lost that Daenerys Prince, undrafted free agent running back out of Tulsa, uh, he's getting a lot of run um, as the number two back. Like When Pacheco was out, you'll see Prince getting a bunch of time with the ones. I'm seeing it more and more. I'm seeing Prince's name on the practice reports more and more getting prominent touches. I know part of it is he's young and they're trying to get him up to speed. But this is a guy that last year, it's overstating it, but he kind of took training camp by storm. He was he got everybody excited, like, ooh, is this the next Isaiah Pacheco? He's not that next Isaiah Pacheco, but he's pretty good. Um, and I would argue that he's better. He's more talented than Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, but Clyde Edwards-Hilaire obviously has the experience and all that. Um, so for those Pacheco owners out there, or if you're just wanting to bottom fish for a potential handcuff kind of out of nowhere in a deeper league where everybody scarfs up the the first and second and sometimes third running backs, don't overlook Daneric Prince being the number two back, even if they don't list it. I don't expect him to list it that way on death charts. I expect him to honor Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who re-signed there as a free agent for for junk money so i mean clyde the, the investment they have in clyde edwards hilaire is little to nothing and it's even less with with daenerys prince but daenerys prince is a better runner of the ball he might be an actually a better receiver uh overall as well there are some pacheco-ish type traits but he's not he's not to me he's nowhere near as good as pacheco so even if they list clyde edwards hilaire number two I think if something happened to Pacheco, they would certainly trot Edwards Hilaire out there. But if it was going to be something that was going to be a while for Pacheco, I think we'd start to see Daenerys Prince. And then if if Prince starts popping, he would leave Edwards Hilaire in the dust just like Pacheco did. So I, if I could only have one or the other for week one, protection on Pacheco would be Clyde Edwards Hilaire but for a season long it's like best ball if I was taking a shot on uh who who the winner might be in that in those sweepstakes I think Prince will would end up being the guy over Hilaire or they'd be in a split so uh these reports of of Prince getting more time with the ones it can get lost because he is young and they're trying to get him reps but I think they're 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 getting him ready to be the number two or the working number two split with Clyde Edwards Hilaire and Prince is probably the more talented. And I say all this because right now it's, it's important to consider it right now in, in leagues that go deeper because Prince is going to get a lot of work in the preseason. I, we, you're not going to see Pacheco or, but very limited. You're not going to see Clyde Edwards Hilaire. They know what they got there. You're going to see everybody else. You're going to see a lot of Daenerys Prince. And if he does something really positive to Daenerys Prince train, especially because anything that's working in Kansas City is instantly doubles in value and everybody's eyes are on it. So this is probably a pre-warning before they play the preseason games that uh, Daenerys Prince might be one of the breakout stars or at least breakout names of the preseason getting ready to happen. RC, I also wanted to ask you about a player that we did a scouting report on earlier this offseason, Luis Reese Zamet, who was a former rugby star, LRZ. How does he stack up 
against Daenerys Prince because LRZ is also listed as a running back. But I think, as you mentioned on in that video, and for those of you that haven't seen it, go check that out. You think he might be used more as a receiver. Do you think that he has a chance to, if Pacheco went down, take over or have a significant role in that backfield? It's too soon for him for that. I've watched some of his camp tape, and you can tell it's it's all so very new to him. I mean, at running back, you've got how to take the proper handoff, how to interpret the holes, um, you know, what happens when all these 300-pounders are coming at you. I think you'd have been better served to be, and I think they're they're working him this way, is that he could be a running back, he can be a wide receiver, he can, you can kind of move him around all over the place. You can put a, line him up in the backfield, but have him go out for a swing pass or a flare pass um, and see what he can do with it. And he looks pretty good on those. I think his future is going to be as a wide receiver. But in 2024, they would never turn to um, re-sam it because, I mean, you're talking about the defending Super Bowl champions. You're talking about a team that's going to is an odds-on favorite to go back there again. If they were to lose Pacheco, they are not going to go to the inexperienced rugby player um, as a uh, pull to try to get them through. He's just he's not that talented uh, to where he's just going to burst on the scene and go by all of those guys. If if Prince were to fail, Clyde Edwards Hilaire were to be a dud, they would go find so every, any any running back, especially before trade deadlines and all that, are just going to want to go play for Kansas City. So this just isn't uh, LRZ's time. Uh, it will be, in, it could be in the future, but it's not his time now. So for people holding LRZ and Dynasty, you you don't recommend them if they have space, keep them on. But Prince might be more valuable in in the short term, yeah. at least. I would rather have uh, Prince tactically. I'm good with holding on to LRZ because I, I want to see what we don't know is I've seen Daenerys Prince in preseason. I've seen Daenerys Prince at Tulsa. I, I know what Pacheco was capable of. I knew it when he was at Rutgers, when everybody thought he was a nobody uh, and we were pushing him as the top, as a top three running back in his draft class, which seemed crazy at the time. Now it's not so crazy. And we're saying Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was a, is a bust, and that has uh, come to fruition. I know all those guys. I've only seen the glimpses of Reese Zamet in workout, try, you know, in the international program workouts, and I've seen some tape of him in training camp. I don't know what's going to happen when they put the helmet and pads on him and give him the ball. It could be magic. So... I'm good to hold on to him depending on my roster configuration uh, situation and how deep the league goes with names. I, he's not going to be anything for 2024. Is it, he may be a great, he may end up being one of the better kick returners, but I don't think he's going to be an offensive weapon quite yet. But I am really interested to see how he comes through this preseason. So he, if he jumps into the first game, and he's and he's skittish in practice, and he's just trying to get his beats down. And then all of a sudden, they put him in a game. They kick it off to him, and he returns the first one for a touchdown. Like if he's the first one to return a kick for a touchdown under the new rules in the preseason, plus he plays for Kansas City, it's going to be this major event that ever. And it's the rugby guy and everything else. He's going to draw so much attention. And maybe if they put him in the back, uh, he's going to get time in the backfield in the preseason. Maybe they give him a pitch out or a screen pass, and he takes it to the house. He's got that kind of ability. He could get on the – he could be of value fast, and then I might be a seller at that point if people start to get overheated on LRZ. So that's the thing with the Kansas City guys, with Prince, with uh, Reese Zamet. If they do something nice in the preseason, like when – you know, Eric Gray has two touchdowns in a preseason game, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, Eric Gray, yeah. Mm. Nobody's going to care two days from now. Um, but if a Kansas City player does something, it's going to be big-time news. Everybody's going to get super excited. So that, to me, is their value. But Prince makes more operational sense. But there is a future in LRZ, and we'll report out on it. We'll discuss it 
after he plays his first preseason game. 